Antonio Gutierrez is speaking. We want to carry that live. And recent reported attacks from southern Lebanon. I appeal to all parties and those who have an influence over those parties to avoid any further escalation and spillover. I call for the immediate release of all Israeli hostages held in Gaza. Civilians must be protected at all times. International humanitarian law must be respected and upheld. About 220,000 Palestinians are now sheltered in 92 UNRWA facilities across Gaza. UN premises and all hospitals, schools and clinics must never be targeted. UN staff are working around the clock to support the people of Gaza, and I deeply regret that some of my colleagues have already paid the ultimate price. Crucial life-saving supplies, including fuel, food and water, must be allowed into Gaza. We need rapid and unimpeded humanitarian access now. I want to thank Egypt for its constructive engagement to facilitate humanitarian access through the Rafah crossing and to make the Al Arish airport available for critical assistance. There is no time to lose. Every moment counts. Thank you. Should Israel stop bombing Gaza? Thank you. OK. All right, I thought there was perhaps going to be another speaker, but that's not the case. Uh, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, just gave a, a very, very short address. The headlines, and I, I missed the first line or two, but the headlines, um, Antonio Guterres was calling for the immediate release of hostages. Um, he was also confirming that several UN staff members have been killed, this in the Gaza Strip. We were saying that earlier this hour. And that uh, supplies, humanitarian supplies, must be allowed into Gaza now. Uh, let's turn to Shihab Ritansi. Shihab, you're live at the United Nations for us. I think you heard the same thing that I did. I missed the very, very top of it, so correct me if I missed something important. I probably did. Um, he was also saying Egypt should make their El Arish, that's in the Sinai next to Israel, their El Arish airport available. Uh, anything else that stood out to you, Shihab? Well, in fact, just as you were talking to Hoda about the escalation on the border with Lebanon, that's actually what the Secretary General was speaking about. He said he was in contact with leaders around in the region, and he had several priorities, the first of which was avoiding what he called spillover. And he said that he'd heard the reports about what was happening at the border uh, with Lebanon, and he called on all parties to, uh, to work against escalation. So it was precisely what you were talking about, this news of paradox gliders apparently now being used. And then, as you said, he called for the immediate release of Israeli hostages. He says civilians should never be targeted. International law should be upheld. UN locations not targeted. And, and this is interesting, actually. He said that supplies of food and water should be entered, should be allowed into Gaza now. And then he thanked Egypt. Now, that's different, because on Monday, when we heard from the UN Secretary General, he, he merely said that he was distressed by news of the, of the siege. And he came under a great deal of criticism, actually, certainly from the press corps, by his usage of the word distress as opposed to condemn or, 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 or any kind of uh, any exhortation on Israel not to uh, inflict a siege on Gaza, given that it is, is in such flagrant violation of international law, of, of the laws of collective punishment, of proportionality. I mean, you, you know, if you can't condemn that, if you can't tell Israel not to do that, then what can you do at the United Nations, which is supposed to be upholding international humanitarian law, the Geneva Conventions, UN Security Council resolutions, and so on? So at the very least, then, here, this time, he did call on Israel to allow food and water in to Gaza, but he, he said so without any, using any words that he's used in the past about Palestinian actions, condemnation, and so on. He simply said that, that, that the, the border must be, or the frontier must be opened. He said that UN locations should never have been targeted, as you've been reporting. We already know 18 UN locations have already been targeted, and, and these are shelters. These are the schools that we keep hearing about where, uh, you know, tens of thousands of people are sheltering, having been displaced. As often is the case, Israel is apparently targeting those, and several have been hit. 
Uh, we, we know that already. We also know that nine UN staff have been killed. Actually, just in the last hour, in addition, we had an update from the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent, who said that ten Red, uh, oh no, five Red Crescent members had been killed because the ambulances that they were traveling in were targeted by the Israelis. In addition, uh, we understand that the headquarters of the Red Crescent in Gaza has been bombed by the Israelis. Shihab, I wonder if you can pull back the curtain a little bit on, uh, on this speech. Um, I found out only a short while ago that we were expecting a statement by Gutierrez. Um, often we get a little bit more notice for these things. And frankly, I'm surprised at how short the speech was. I assume that perhaps the UN Secretary General had prepared a, a broader statement laying out a position about the, uh, the uh, Gaza-Israel war. That, that's not the case. So my question is, um, do you know why we found out at such short notice? Do you know what triggered the speech? And is there anything else, you know, about, the U about Gutierrez's broader position on this that you can bring to us? Well, we, we did hear, we did get notice with a couple of hours, actually, but oh, okay. he was My working bad, on the speech till the very last moment. He was notably about 15, 15 minutes late. But, uh, but, we, but we had heard, you know, this morning that, that he would be making a statement. It was short by his standards. It also, you know, was, was low on the usual calls for, you know, of condemnation or, or of anything like that. This was, you know, very similar. This is simply about opening well, what would seem obvious to, from a UN Secretary General, which is you cannot collectively punish uh, an entire population of civilians and restrict food and water, which, you know, would seem prima facie the obvious thing for the Secretary General, who's supposed to be upholding international humanitarian law, to say. But actually, even then, I have to say, I was a bit surprised that he, he went as far as he did. For the last day or two, it's actually been members of other UN agencies who've been calling for a total ceasefire. The UN Secretary General on Monday, notably, did not call for a total ceasefire. He only called on Hamas to cease its military activities, but he said that the Israelis could continue theirs as long as it was within international humanitarian law. Now we're seeing the spokesperson for the UN Secretary General speaking. I'm sure he'll be asked a number of these questions now, there. Mm. All right, Shihab, Shihab Rutansi, thank you very much uh, for your reporting from UN headquarters there.